Welcome. Aruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvota V'tzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. We're in the process of what are ultimately going to be talked about as the Noahide laws. And these are basic divine laws for humanity as opposed to the Jewish people. So let me get us into the text. I hope that eventually you can see it. There we are. So um, we just were told uh, in uh, in verse three that uh, man could now eat animals; they could eat meat. However, they were not allowed to do to take a limb of an animal, an unessential limb or non-vital limb from an animal and amputate it and then consume it. And also one was not permitted to drink the blood of a living animal or etc. So going on, the ach, however, right? However, et dimchem the nafshotechem edrosh. He says, I, God is saying, I will require of you your life blood, right? Your blood for your lives. Miyad kol chaya edroshenu. So I'm going to require it of any living beast. Miyad adam and from any human being. Miyad ish achiv, from a man against his brother. And Rashi's got edrosh et nefesh adam. I will require the life of a human being. So in other words, murder and any uh, killing of a human being is considered liable. It is actionable, etc. So let's take a look at Rashi here. For ach et dimchem, however, your blood, your blood. Af al pi shehi tarti lachem netilat neshama piv hema, despite the fact that I have given you I have allowed you to take the life of an animal. Etimchem edrosh. I will require of you your blood. Mehashofech damatzmo. And here we're talking about someone who commits suicide from one who spills his own blood. So suicide is prohibited as a Noahide law, right? Live naf shotechem for your life. And it says, af hachonek atzmo. So the fact that it says your life, in other words, if, it take, if you take your life, even someone who strangles himself, af al pi shalo yatsami menudam, despite the fact that there is no blood being spilled, there's no blood coming out of that person. Again, taking your life, whether it involves spilling blood or whether it doesn't. Miyad kol chaya, from the hands of every animal, from every beast. Lefi shechat dor hamabul, because the generation of the blood of the flood sinned, v'huf karu l'machol chayot raot lishlot pahem, and they were given over as food for wild beasts, vicious beasts, to overcome them, to overpower them. In other words, they when it says lishlot by him, the these wild beasts at the time of the flood were they were not held accountable for taking the lives and uh, for food of human beings. Shinemar, as it says, and this is an interesting translation of Psalm uh, forty nine. Nimshal kebehemot nidmu. Okay, so it says. So here we go. So nimshal can be in the context of that psalm. Uh, it, it's it's suggesting that human life can be compared simply to the life of an animal. But here the word nimshal is from mashal to moshel to be governed. He is ruled. Okay, uh, and and kabhaymot nidmu like like the animals. In other words, he is. He is um, governed by the animals and the idea of his life being taken. And this would be at the time of the flood. 
lefichach, and because that was permissible at the time of the flood, lefichach for this reason, hutzrach lahazir alehem et hachayot. For this reason, the animals had to be warned about this. In other words, so that the idea is that when an animal takes the life of a human being, that animal is judged. Interesting idea, because it's hard to see an animal as being responsible in that regard. However, that's, that appears to be the meaning as how we traditionally understand this. Umiyad ha'adam, and from the hand of man, miyad ha'horeg b'mezid, here we're talking about one who kills someone intentionally, the ein edim, but without any witnesses, ani edrosh, I, that is God, will require of it. In other words, will punish such a person. So that even if a person isn't able to be punished by a human court, the divine court will judge this person. One is ultimately um, accountable no matter what, whether that accountability is in front of a human court or whether one gets away with it, at least in this lifetime. Miyad ish echav, and this additional of from the hand of a man, his brother. And this situation is miyad shehu ohev lo ka'ach. This is a case where there isn't any uh, intention or, or maliciousness involved. This person, A, loves B like a brother, but he it's a case, question of manslaughter. It's an unintentional. He kills him accidentally, unintentionally. Ani edrosh. I will require uh, an accountability of that person. Im lo yigale. If he is not willing to go into an, into exile, v'yivakesh al avono imachel, and requires and seeks to have his iniquity uh, forgiven. So he goes on to say, because even someone who kills someone else unintentionally, they still require atonement. So the act itself is, even if one doesn't have an intention to do it, the point is that there may be negligence involved. There's a good chance that it is has to do with some level of negligence and taking a life on account of negligence is still going to require atonement. The im edim lechayvo galut. But if there are no uh, witnesses to uh, require him to go into exile, in other words, the court would normally send such a person into exile, into one of the cities of refuge, and he'd have to stay there until the death of the high priest, which was considered to be an atoning act. But he would have to stay there until such a time. Uh, and if, but if there are no witnesses who can testify regarding what happened, they the court is not going to be able to sentence him in that regard. For who a no nichma, and but and he himself doesn't admit what he did. He doesn't humble himself. Akadosh Baruch Hu Doresh Mimenu, the Holy One, blessed be He, will require accountability from Him. And there's an example given of how this might actually take place. Our sages explained, it says, and God, the God, has forced His hand. Right? In the tractate, Makot, this still is going to be explained. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mizamnan Lapundak Echad. The example given is that you have someone who killed someone else intentionally and uh, someone else, another person entirely unrelated, who killed someone unintentionally, but through negligence, etc., that the two of them are, in the story, invited to an inn, which is a public location, and the the murderer, right, the one who got away with murder, uh, is goes up a ladder. Uh, uh, sorry, the one is is underneath a ladder, and the one who killed the person unintentionally goes up the ladder, and the ladder breaks, and the person falls on top of the murderer and kills him, 
And of course, now there are witnesses because he's in a public place. And even though he killed him unintentionally, he will be sent into exile. And that is the scenario that the rabbis put together to explain how God might be involved in, in making sure that justice takes place. So uh, let's go on. Shofech, dam adam, one who spills the blood of another person, but adam damo shafech. His his blood shall be spilled by uh, by by a human being, and this is talking about the fact that the, a court is given the authority to sentence someone to capital punishment. That it requires that that there's at least a sensibility here that it requires actually um, divine permission for a, a human court to sentence someone. To a capital punishment, Elohim, yeah. because in the in um, right in the image of God, Adam, he made man. So it's interesting that this Betzelem Asait Adam may in fact give explanation to why a human court can do this. That in this sense that because the word Elohim has the connotation of a judge, and in the image of, of a judge, God, God made man, or God made man in his image, in the sense that human beings have the capacity to be able to administer justice as well, even on this kind of level. Let's take a look at Rashi. The Adam Damoi Shafeh. At the hands of man, his blood shall be spilt. Im yesh edim, if there are eyewitnesses we're talking about, in other words, that there's no doubt whatsoever, hami tuhu atem, you yourselves need to uh, give him the death sentence, you should kill him yourselves. Lama, why? Ki betzela emelohim, and here we go, because human beings are created in the divine image. And so they have that capacity and that obligation to administer justice. Mm -hmm. So it's worth uh, commenting a little bit here. So the Torah clearly accepts capital punishment as a legitimate form of the administration of justice. Mm -hmm. However, I will tell you that um, in, in rabbinic literature, especially in the Tractate Sanhedrin, we realize that what this is saying is that while human beings are in a perfect situation where there's absolutely no question that this is uh, part of uh, malicious intent on the, on the part of the individual, and they were warned, they had to be warned, that they knew they were very conscious that what they were doing was a capital offense, that a capital that capital punishment can be administered. It doesn't necessarily mean that that there's any desire to administer capital punishment. It's just that it's on the books and that it is there as a possibility. But it had to be, it, it could only be done in a court of 23 judges. And there was always appeal in, in discussing the details of this. Uh, every precaution was taken before someone could be uh, executed. So it's, I think, also essentially supposed to be a way in which to discipline human beings, to, to warn them, etc. To what degree that's an effective warning? I think it can be to some extent. Uh, if if I'm allowed to philosophize a little bit, it seems to me that the people who go out and murder numerous people, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you hear about these things. Uh, it's like the absolute reverse of you know taking taking life so cheaply that people are willing to take life cheaply, and the idea of the Torah wanting to make sure that it is not taken in a cheap kind of way. Asa et Hadam, he made man. So they, there's no subject for the he. It's just a pronoun 
And Rashi says, Ze mikra chaser. This is an elliptical scriptural statement, but tzarich liyot. In fact, the way it really should say it is, Asa ha'ose et hadam. The one who, the one who made, made man. And he says there are many such examples of these elliptical phrases where the subject isn't mentioned and it just, the verb itself just is in the third person and we have to take the subject as understood. So, okay. One more verse. As for you, be fruitful and multiply. Shirtsu va'aretz, abound in the land, or vuba, and uh, grow mighty in it. In other words, uh, but it also has to do with uh, being multiply within it, be numerous. Here, let's find the place. For atem pru urvu, and as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Lefip shuto. So this is mentioned twice, right? It was mentioned very early on in Genesis, where man is told to be fruitful and multiply. Lefip shuto harishona livracha. The first time it's mentioned back in Genesis, it's understood as a blessing to people. Uh, of course, I explained that the word bracha had the word blessing has the connotation of plenitude. But kan letzivui. However, here it is a command. Ulufi midrasho, right? And according to the midrashic interpretation of this, where this comes, it comes right after the law about uh, about capital punishment. Lahakish mi no osek beferia verivia. It is to connect one who does not engage in being fruitful and multiplying, damim, to one who is committing bloodshed. So there's a very, you can see, at least according to this interpretation, there's a very strong uh, mitzvah of procreation. Of procreation. Um, again, one has to understand that this is written Torah, and that there's always an oral Torah that takes care of circumstances. There are people who are incapable of procreation, etc., etc. And this would not this would not apply to such people. But if you're in a place where you are in a, you're capable of it and you're able to do it, the idea is a very strong um, movement towards procreation and to do that. And I'm actually going to stop here. We got to the end of a parsha, And so for today, I'm going to stop. And God willing, we'll continue this next time. So I'm going to stop the share. Okay. Very good.